Okay, I thought I'd work a few example problems. So let's say you've got some function z, which is 3x squared y to the third. So then the total differential is going to be dz by dx, dx plus dz by dy, dy. So dz by dx is 6xy cubed because uh, you are taking the, you're basically treating y as, as a constant and you're taking the derivative of x. So the two comes out front, giving you x to the one and three times two is six. So that is dx. plus 9x squared y squared dy. And again here, we're treating, we're taking the derivative with respect to y. So we're treating x constants, we keep x squared the third comes out front, leaving you y to the second power, and three times three is nine. So this is easy. Okay, another example. Z is equal to minus one, x squared plus y squared. <clears throat> okay, so taking the partials a little more complicated. Now, the partial of z with respect to x, you can think of it as the partial with respect to x of x squared plus y squared to the minus one. And we know that in that case, you first attack what's on the outside of the parenthesis and then address what's inside the parenthesis term by term. So that means that we get minus one x squared plus y squared to the minus two, right? Because minus one minus one is minus two, and we bring that minus uh, one out front. And then the derivative of what's inside the parenthesis is two x, because the y is just a constant and the derivative of the constant is zero and uh, x squared becomes 2x. Doing the same for y dz by dy is equal to d by dy x squared plus y squared to the minus one is equal to minus one x squared plus y squared to the minus two, two y, then our total dz is uh, one over x squared plus y squared squared. So I've taken the uh, these two terms times 
two x dx plus two y dy. And a third example and I know you probably don't need these many, but hey, there's nothing like a math review. I'll tell you the truth, most of the math that I know and use, I think I taught myself uh, as I needed it. You know, I, I know that I took a bunch of math classes and minored in math, but you don't really learn it until you're facing an application. And then you go back to your math classes and your math textbooks and notes and dig through them and figure out what you were supposed to have learned the first time. I know that's certainly true for what, I, what I've learned in uh, you know, the math for thermodynamics and then also the math for uh, you know, dealing with quantum mechanics. Those both required me to review. So let's, let's uh, take the uh, partials of of this function of x and y, dz by dx is equal to cosine y. So our uh, x to the one just goes to one. And that is then uh, <clears throat> minus negative y sine x, so plus sine x. And dz by dy is equal to minus x sine y. Cosine y is minus the derivative of cosine y becomes minus sine y uh, minus again the y goes to one, leaving us with cosine x. So now our total differential is cosine y plus sine, oops, plus y sine x. So our partial with respect to x plus minus x sine y minus cosine x dy. And it's usually convenient to move your negative sign out front. And kind of a last example, I want to show that the physical meaning of these differentials, right? Because we do a bunch of math, but you say, well, why do we do it? Well, in part, we do this because, you know, let's say I've got some f, x, and y. Part of the reason we do it is because. I can now write these, and I, I know that each of these terms are the slope of f, right? If I've got some uh, f, x, y, and this is some surface. 
I know that at some point on that surface, and we have to specify that particular point, we know at that point what the slope is. So in writing it in this fashion, we now have some like that. But this total differential itself, it represents the change in this function from some infinitesimal change of position on that surface. And to show you, let's, let's imagine, uh, imagine we're at point uh, where are my, my notes here I'm saying X is one and y is two. And let's say we're moving by delta x is uh, 0 0.05 and delta y is uh, zero point one some some uh, distance. Now, one thing you could do is you could simply, you know, substitute into that function And if you substitute it into the function, well, I, I made up a function here. I made up a function uh, nine minus x squared minus y squared. Now, if you substitute into that function, f at uh, 1.05, 1.05 comma 2.1 minus f at uh, 1, 2, and have that be our Delta F. Now substituting into that, uh, you get well, get a little bit smaller there. Well, I'm not going to write it out. You can figure out how to substitute in. You get uh, Delta F. I'm going to call this uh, substitution. Uh, is equal to minus 0 0.5125. But using a differential form, taking our partials with respect to x and y here. And here, you can see we get an approximate of and you substitute in and get minus 5.0. So they're, they're not exactly the same, right? And you know the direct substitution, of course, is, is more accurate. But the reason that we work with the total differentials in this class 
is because we want to be carrying around these slopes. And we know in our case, those have physical meaning. But nonetheless, what I just wanted to demonstrate here is that this concept of a, a total differential, it has a physical meaning and that physical meaning can be thought of in terms of uh, positions on a curve. And it's also worth pointing out that we're working with state functions. And we talked earlier about the Schwartz theorem. Well, these state functions are, are very well-behaved curves. So that's something that's going to make, well, it makes the math in many regards a little bit easier because it's a special case of having a well-defined continuous medium. So we're not constantly going in and checking continuity and differentiability. <laughs>